multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. The day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. Everyone in our time will decide whether they serve this doctrine of vengeance and violence or the doctrine of Christ, which commands us to follow peace and holiness with all men in all circumstances, without which no man shall see the Lord. Okay, but any law. An eye for an eye, well, you see it if written you follow, all over here. If you follow the law of God, if you broke the law, you got punishment. It's the same way with society. And that's what, America, if you break, that's that's what America's God, getting, punishment. No, they're getting punishment against the people. The United States is founded. It, my solution is stand back and watch the salvation of God because God is getting ready to judge the earth. And God is getting ready to shake the foundations of the Western world. And so the book of Hebrews says, God will shake mighty the earth so that those things that cannot be shaken may remain. This whole nation is shaking in its boots. It's getting ready to meet God in battle. You see the dragon? Take a look at the continent of Europe. If you can see that Europe is a great, big, tremendous dragon with its mouth wide open. Take a look. It has to do with what's going on in the world. You see the tongue sticking out of the dragon's mouth? Right here, take a look. Europe is the head of this great Leviathan. Scandinavia, you see? The scripture says, Blessed are ye when men shall taunt you, and when they shall revile you, and when they shall persecute you for Christ's sake, as this man is doing. Blessed everyone are everyone who this man speaks about. No peace while our people are being killed. No peace to the wicked, the scripture says. The Ameri United States of America are not the wicked. The well, United then, States of America are here if to you were a Native American, I just came back from Rosebud Reservation in Pine Ridge in, in <laughs> South Dakota. If you want to know who's the wicked, you ask an indigenous, wasted away, a real American, a real American sitting in squalid huts in reservations where they were put by this system yeah. while this system exploited right. all of Mother Earth around it. Right. You want to talk about wickedness, ask the children. Do you blame the 7,000 men and women that were killed in the World Trade Center for that? I am not. If they were innocent, they're already in heaven. Dying is an illusion, my friend. If you are in Christ, you are alive. There is no death it's in my Christ. my illusion, and I don't want somebody halfway across the world who never laid eyes on me before taking that illusion away from me. Well, there is only or one my family. Force. You know, my mother worked at the top of the World Trade Center, I, and she was on vacation, and she is fine. But I'll tell you what, I, they almost stole my mother from me. No, because God kills. It wasn't God. God. It was a bunch of sick fucks. And what about the sick so-and-sos that they attack? Not the you saying that God is on the side of these animals that did I'm this? I'm saying that there is one God in the universe, and he is known by the judgments he executes. And we should fear God rather than boasting that we're going to go over and tear the nuts out of uh, Osama bin Laden when you go over there and do that. Do think Our war is not with God. Our war is with terrorism. God's with war evil. is with, with this. No, with God's war is against evil, and evil is terrorism. Uh, He's a light. I think he said Woe to knows. them who call evil good and good evil. Yes. And put woe light for darkness friend. and woe sweetness. To you. Yes, woe to me. Because I understand that this system of whom you belong is going to sweep me off these streets soon. I mean, yeah, that's what Christ said. If they have done these things to me, they will do it to you. Let me ask you a question. Yes. yes. The rich of the United States are totally the wicked. Am I understanding you right? I'm saying because they are doing it in Jesus' name, that makes them wicked. I'm not asking why. I'm asking, are right. you saying... Okay, why, why every time someone asks you a question, you, you go to your book? Because I live in this book. I live in this book. I'm not using my own interpretation like you. I'm coming from the book. All right, uh, okay. Hey, wait a minute, here's the answer. Go to now, you rich man. Weep and howl for your miseries that are coming upon you. For your riches are corrupted, your garments are moth-eaten, the gold and silver is cankered, and the rust of them shall be a witness against you, and shall eat your flesh as it were fire, for you heaped up treasure together against the last days. 
it says, every day life it says behold the hire of the laborers, which has... Simple question. Well, there's the that's simple the answer. answer. The simple no, answer. No, Woe to the rich. I'm just asking a question. Okay, you're saying that the rich of the United States no, are, the, are, the, are the oppressors of the earth. And because I'm not knocking the book. I'm simply implying that what was written in that book is not implying to the United States. Well, that's The United States is here for everybody in the world when they need us. Then why? Okay. Neat. And it's a shame to see Hold people that have lived in the comfort and the blanket of security that the United States provides to actually turn around and, and lose faith in the nation. Then, then we are free. When we need you the most. The scripture says that they promise the people liberty, but they themselves are slaves of corruption. The scripture says that we, you know what we are free to do? We are free to produce consumer goods. And we are free to consume consumer goods. We are free to fight their wars. We are free to elect them into office. Excuse me. We are not free You're to wrong. perform righteousness. I am free not to buy consumer goods if I so choose. Exactly. Then you I am free out. not to vote if I so choose. There you go. I am free not to do anything that I don't choose to All do. Right. So I live in a society that allows me the right to make that choice for myself. You, Yes, it appears that you're allowed to be, but it, I am allowed. George Bush, yes, you're allowed as long as you speak for that system. But if you speak against this system, then you will feel the weight of the jackboot. No, I won't. George Excuse Bush, me. George I'm sorry. Bush, but, 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 Excuse me. You don't know what you're talking about. Okay. Right. I tell you what. I tell you what. I'm with this guy. I grew up in Soviet <laughs> Listen, just listen. I grew up in Soviet Union. Yes. There you okay. Go. Yes. That's where, if yeah. you would come out in the central square in any just listen, Ex listen. I'm, I'm listening we've been listening I'm to listening you. I'm just okay. pointing you to that don't point me if you would come out on the central square anywhere in a small or large town in the Soviet Union yes and wouldn't even open your mouth just put out this board yes I give oh, you 15 oh. minutes exactly 15 minutes yeah, exactly. being in jail for right. at least 10 years. All right, now this is the... Okay. Now, you think that I'm going to be allowed to be here when this nation goes to war? Hold on a second. No. Well, then if you Excuse like me? this freedom, why don't you let him have the freedom of speech? Exactly. He does yeah. have the freedom of speech. Yeah. Yeah. He does yeah. have the freedom of speech. Yeah. But we also yeah. have the freedom of speech, right. too, to disagree no, with what he's saying. And he's trying well, we I am not telling him to take this down. I'm saying that you've interrupted it for all the rest of us. Well, I apologize if you don't agree with my beliefs, but I have a right to disagree with what I hear. Yeah, you sure right. do. His voice is loud enough yeah, that I had to listen to it. He's not imposing his point of view on anybody. He point. sets up his little board. People come Absolutely. And I'm not asking him to take it down or stop no, saying what he's no, saying no, either. No, 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 I no, simply no, am expressing to him that I don't agree. A lot of people are yelling and screaming, and nobody needs to yell and scream. We're just having a discussion. Have a discussion. Stop yelling. It's just his point of view. It's just his point of view. You might even find out that you're wrong about what you think he's saying. That just because of those rich all. people, I don't have this right, and I don't have this right, and I don't have this right. But I know you're, you're jumping to a lot of wrong conclusions. You know, just Maybe I am, but uh, if you'd like to speak and point me out, I'd be glad to listen. What does that mean? Listen here right. closely listen. because it's I'm listening to you. Do you have something to say that I was wrong about? Do you think I made a wrong conclusion? In what regard? I'm not screaming. I'm trying to make myself loud. It's very loud here. I'm not yelling at you in any way. I'm trying to understand what you. Jesus was Jewish. Of course. But you said God. I'm not. I just want to get my. I said that God was not a Jew. Right. I said God is not a Christian. God is not a Muslim. God transcends all of that. God is the force of existence itself. Human In the Bible, he came from Jewish to fulfill the prophecy. And anyone comes, anyone comes will be his son. That's the house it. is a house yeah, of prayer for all that's nations. That's the whole point. For every, for all people. It's not the choosing Jewish people, only no, no. Anyone comes to him yes. and be son of him. That's the yeah, whole exactly. point. That's, true. that's, what we, well, that's why that. Jesus died for us to open for up the gates of heaven. Human universe. That's exactly right. That's what, right in the center of this mystery, is the gateway to heaven. Then I have a question for you. I grew up Roman Catholic. Me too. Same here. The Roman Catholic Church, from what my studies were, condemns people that aren't Christian and aren't Catholic. But in the Bible, exactly. it says that if we go to God, if we have a, a faith, that he will accept, or God will accept us into his kingdom. Am I wrong? Yeah, no, you're and absolutely why right. The, why does the church right. that is representation of the Bible. I come out of that church. I don't like, expose the doctrines of that church anymore. Because I understand that to be a true Christian is to be a true Buddhist, is to be a true Jew, is to be a true Muslim. 
and then the church the itself that which represents the Bible for most of the world no, will no. condemn you. Of course, no absolutely. Absolutely will condemn this. America this is heresy. Well, just as this brother is right, if I stood in Red Square, I would be swept away and put in prison. If I stood in the center of Rome in the 1500s, I would have been burned at a stake. If I stand here, I am free to do it, except when George Bush declares a state of national emergency and he enacts the Office of Homeland Security and he begins to suspend all constitutional privileges and anyone, that's why the Book of Revelation says, that there is a group that will come at the end of the days and they shall not love their lives to the death, but they shall make war against the system of Antichrist by the words of their testimony. And it's just interesting. I'm saying we must not ever kill another human being. Are you implying you think George Bush would take away freedom of religion and freedom of speech in this country due to this attack? Absolutely. Absolutely. There's an anti-war movement growing in this country, and that movement will be under surveillance as it was in the 60s when I was much younger. And when this anti-war movement begins to have effect, the United States government will send provocateurs into these groups to incite riots. They will then begin to arrest people who have a voice in this movement and they will be charged because in America it is a, a crime punishable by death, treason and sedition to say anything against war in a time of war. That is not wrong, my friend. That is the law on the statutes of this country in a time of war. It is treason to say so fucking what? So that means that there's a lot of people are going to be brought before the tribunals of America and executed. Nothing. That's just that the mystery of Christ is going to be fulfilled. I'm not sure that the peace movement is going to be quite as strong as you think. I think all Americans are afraid for their loved ones right now. And I think a lot of Americans I am afraid are going to for my loved country. ones. I have grandchildren who I do not want to die in Afghanistan. Well, I don't think that the peace movement is going to rise enough to take us down like it did in Vietnam. Take us down? I think America is going to reign supreme in this, and I think America is going to find out who these people are, and in the justest way possible, they're going to take these people and they're going to hold them up to the courts of the world, not just to the United States. Okay. All right. There is a... Are you familiar with the books that were found in the caves of Qumran in 1948, the Dead Sea Scriptures? Yeah, that we heard of. I don't right. know exactly, but I... John the Baptist was a scene, was in a scene. John the Baptist had these books in his possession, then they were hidden in the caves, and now they're coming out. And among them is a text of several books called The Triumph of God, Descriptions of the Final Age. And in these texts is a, a text that is entitled The Wars of the Sons of Light and the Sons of Darkness. And among this text, and that's why Paul says we are among we are the children of light. We are not the children of darkness. It says, Now, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you, for you know full well the day of the Lord comes as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But we are not appointed to wrath, we are appointed to life in Christ Jesus. Now, this is, this one page is a text in this text. It says, they pay no heed, which means we, we pay no heed to the hidden meaning of what is actually taking place. We do not know the hidden meaning of what is actually taking place, nor have we ever understood the lessons of the past. God has destroyed every one of these empires. And now we see it getting ready to happen to us, and we imagine why. We cannot imagine why. Consequently, we have no knowledge of what is coming upon us, and we have done nothing to save ourselves from the deeper implication of present events. This, however, will symbolize things for us. What is going to happen is, as it were, that all iniquity is going to be shut up in the womb and prevented from coming to birth. Wrong is going to depart before right as darkness departs before light. As smoke disappears and is no more, so will wrong disappear forever, but right will be revealed like the sun. 
and the world will rest on a sound foundation and the world will be filled with knowledge. And then this last paragraph says, the thing is certain to come, the prophecy is true, and by this you may know that it will not be revoked. Do not all peoples hate wrongdoing, yet is it not rampant among them all? Are not the praises of truth sung by all nations, yet is there a single race or tribe that really adheres to it? What nation likes to be oppressed by a stronger power? Or who wants his property plundered unjustly, yet is there a single nation that has not oppressed its neighbor? Or where in the world will you find a people that has not plundered the property of another? And there's only one nation in the world that has not is not guilty of these things. And that is the nation that is in the process of being born. It's the nation, just as every child is born out of the darkness of this age, of its mother's womb, we are being born out of the darkness of this age into the light of the age to come, and that's why we are observing Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. If we repent, if Osama bin Laden does not repent, the armies of America will destroy him. If the Americans do not repent, God will destroy America, America because every nation on earth that has oppressed its neighbor is going to be destroyed. That means every nation on earth. Every warring nation. Every Name one of the one nations one. that are coming to meet on the Battle of Armageddon. All nations are warring. Well, there are many nations that are not sending armies into this battle. The indigenous no, nations. Plenty of battles. There have been plenty of battles over the centuries and centuries. Exactly, but now we've come to the day. When, which all of ignorance will be shut up in the womb. God has had to allow evil, the nations of the earth, to come to this moment, this time and this moment. You're trying to say that this is the final moment. This is a, the beginning. Of we're coming to the vortex of human consciousness where our whole, this age is ending, a new is in the process of being born, and we must understand what God is doing in order for us to survive the judgments that are coming. And, find ourselves alive on the morning of the coming age. We must be nonviolent. We must walk as Christ taught us to walk. He's the Lamb of God. When they came to give Jesus trouble, did he fight back? No. He just fell down as a lamb. Well, the good thing be, uh, be killed and the, then, yeah. Well, the good thing that he said, if this his interpretation is correct, <laughs> is that America is going to strike down Osama bin Laden first before God smashes us around. So, as long as he's brought Venge justice, vengeance I'll be happy. is God. Vengeance is God. What this room here has, what what position it has? That's the tongue yeah. of the dragon. Okay, so and you look and you see Rome there. Yeah. And that's the ancient Roman Empire, which God destroyed. Yeah. Just as he destroyed the Holy Roman Empire, just as he's now getting ready to destroy this empire. Yeah, so he, he, what, 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 what role does it play here? Well, one of the unclean spirits that's going through the earth, gathering the nations to the battle of Armageddon, comes out of the mouth of the dragon. That's the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church, it is, well, the Catholic Church, I was a Catholic, I grew up in the Catholic Church, um, is responsible for the death of millions and millions and millions of individuals over the course of uh, uh, Western history. Uh, pardon me? Why Catholic Church is responsible for? It's impossible? Okay, now I want to... Responsible. No, responsible, sure. Why? Why is it responsible? Well, the, the Catholic Church hung, uh, 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 killed a million women. In, uh, uh, no, uh, true Catholic Church? Oh, yes, my dear. The Catholic Church has been responsible for wars and destructions for 1,500 years. They have... The Catholic Church took women all throughout the Inquisitions chained them to walls, charged them with being witches, with cut off their nipples, took their intestines out of their stomachs. The bishops of the Catholic Church did this, stuck it in their mouth until they would recant and, and uh, oh, sister, just read the history books. I'm very sorry. It's history. It's history. In Europe. In Europe. In Europe. In Europe. In Europe. In Europe. In the Holy Wars. No, in Crusades. The Psalms. Psalms. What's the other song for, against the Jews? Where they talk about the sword, double-edged sword. And also yeah, the, 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 the tongue that speaks like a double-edged sword. 
very vicious. He sacrificed that. Oh, yes. And they say you were yeah. wrong. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. The, 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 the hypocrite he speaks when he says that when he comes of, of, in his of, mouth of, shall of, be of, peace, of, but in his heart just, shall be a, a sword. Yeah. And yeah, he, he speaks no, also about the song called the Speaks, speaks, speaks Viciously yeah. With a double-edged sword yes. Vicious, a double-edged sword, right? Yes. Is this is something that has something to do with what it's saying there? Well, yes, but not really Everybody that they thought was against the church And persecuted them You know, because I think it's a song where it speaks about How vicious the tongue is Yes Just as sharp as the serpent Yes Serpent, too far Well, that's what the serpent is. You see, the serpent dwells in every man. Yes, in that sense, I see what you're saying. Because he speaks with a fork of tongue. He says one thing, but he means another. Mm -hmm. It's very vicious. The tongue is very vicious. Yes, and that's why it says, Hide me, this is Psalm 64, Hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked, who wet their tongue like a sword, yeah. and bend their bows to shoot, even bitter words, that they may shoot in secret at the perfect. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's just real. It's yeah. in a perfect position when you say that the Roman Catholic. But it, it's not. You see, but the. You see, but the Antichrist. The Antichrist has seven heads. The beast has seven heads. It is of these European empires, but the United States is the beast. He's of the seven, but he is an eighth. And the United States is the eighth world empire to rise up in the earth to conscript the truth and to bend. The light by coming in the name of God. C coming in the name of God, and that's why the great whore of Babylon is being judged. God bless there. America oh, so many of them, and they're not strange. Right here. God. Excuse me. What can you say about? You know, they keep saying God bless America, but they're gonna invade Afghanistan. What can you say about that? Well, of course, it's hypocrisy. And they, how? How about the American money that says uh, in God we trust? I, I see of course, a lot of if we trust, if we, if in God politics. we trust, then we would fear God. The because, yeah, because God, this is. They say God bless America. Yes. Yeah, so if you if you look if you look. If you look on the dollar bill, what you see is a lot of ancient Masonic symbols. Uh -huh. The Masonic symbols have to do with a more secret society that existed before the Masons called the Knights Templars. Uh, Pardon me? The stone mason. Yes, exactly. And so all of, you see, all of the mysteries of the Kabbalah, you see this eye on the, you see, all of this, you see, now, Jesus said that the light of the body is the eye. Mm -hmm. But if your eye be single, you see, and that's the symbol mm -hmm. of the single eye, the eye of higher consciousness. Jesus said, if thine eye be single, then your whole body shall be full of light. But then he said, however, if the light in thee be darkness, then how great the darkness. And that's what, you see, the light that was in the founders of the American nation was a dark light. And the whole kingdom of darkness has risen up here now in the western ends of the, this yours? Yeah. In the western ends of the earth. And that's why Paul said, now brethren, you are of the light. You are not of the darkness. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. And that's why we must stand bold. John the Baptist, it is said, no greater love than this, that a man lay down his life for his friend. But then the book says, but herein is our love perfected, that we stand bold in the day of judgment. We must stand bold against this system because it comes in the name of Christ, speaking the words of Christ, stealing and killing and destroying yeah. And taking our sons and daughters, yes. our grandchildren, our brothers and sisters, to yes. take them away and to be devoured in the battlefields of Europe, in the mouth of the dragon, in Central Europe, and we must resist Satan, the serpents. So if you're promoting peace, love and peace in this world, should you be staying here in the United States if the God's gonna destroy this? Well, yes, because yeah, because Christ, Christ, you know, you know, when Christ saved the world, He went to all those sinner countries. But this is where it's happening, right here in New York City, is and New York City and Washington is 
right here is where not only is evil coming to perfection, but good is coming to perfection here as well. The light and the darkness are coming to perfection together. That's why they said that you went to the master. They said, Lord, didn't you sow good seed in the field? He said, yes. He said, well, how come the tares have grown up with the wheat? Let them grow together. Exactly. Let them grow together till the harvest. And so he said, no, because if you root out the evil, you will also root out the good. You see, because every one of us had good and evil in us. So if, if God rooted out evil 2,000 years ago, we could never come to our state of mind. Because I, we all had to see evil for what it is, and I had to see evil in myself. If I didn't, if I didn't uh, come to grips with the darkness, the lust, the greeds, the, the uh, all of the the terrible things about myself, I could never come to my own state of perfection. And we, as a people, could never come to our state of perfection if we did not see Babylon, if we didn't see what evil could do, how perfect and beautiful and enticing it is. Evil is a very enticing thing. It's very glorious. That's why Lucifer is called the light bearer. It, the, the light of evil is very attractive. It is said to be, it is said to be that fire is going to destroy the world. Are they talking about nuclear weapons? No, we're talking about God who is a consuming fire. When the universe came into existence, he came into existence with fire. God is fire. That's why in all of the ancient Vedic religions, fire, Agni, is the first principle. Because God is fire. And so whenever you see, and, and Moses told us, he said, not only is God a consuming fire, but God is a God of war. Yes, that is his name. And so we should fear when we see war come to a generation because this is God. And it's Satan in us that keeps us, it con convinces us that it is evil attacking us. But because we haven't overcome the evil within ourselves, we project our own delusions out into the world and we fail to see that it is God attacking us. It is God bringing the judgment because there is no evil. That, and both evil and good come from the same source. There's only one God. Night and day come from the same God. Good and evil come from the same God. And that's why he said, now look, here's the good, here's the evil, choose the good. But I'm gonna let evil flourish until this particular day. And then I will consume the evil off the face of the earth. And we shouldn't be surprised when we see it happening. It's unfolding. We must make sure that we do not get caught in it. In other words, you said this has happened as a sign of God to let us wake up. Yes, it's for awakening. Awake thou that sleepest, and Christ shall give us light. We must wake up. And when we wake up, because the darkness had not come to perfection yet. You see, that's why we are observing High Holy Days. We had to come a full time of 40 jubilees from the time of Christ, because God's children went into the wilderness for 40 years. And then when we came from Passover to the day of Pentecost, we were commanded to count 49s. This is Shavuot, weeks. And if we counted 49s, as we were told, and counted 49 years 40 times, we would come to the fullness of time, and here we are. Now we're observing high holy days, and everything has come to perfection, the evil and the good. Well, it has to do with the fact that the mystery of Christ is understood in the rising of the sun to the setting of the West. And just because this mystery of the sun, which brings light and life to the whole human family, is the mystery of Christ revealed, just as there are 12 signs of the zodiac, Christ had 12 apostles. And that's why there were 12 tribes of Israel, because it's a great solar lunar mystery that we are observing. And now we have come to blowing the trumpet in the new moon. And we're lifting up the voice in the new moon, sounding the alarm. The new moon is a sign of the return of the feminine principle to her rightful place in the balance of things. The Divine Mother is descending into our field of consciousness and she's bringing forth a child. Excuse me, young fella. Young fella. Young, can you talk over there? Because it's very hard to hear this. Okay, thanks a lot. See, we have come to the day of the blowing of the trumpets in the new moon. 
You see, having come to this time in history, we look and we see we're at the sign of the scales. We see that the world is completely out of balance. Not only is the powerful ruling over the meek, not only is the rich ruling over the poor, but for 2,000 years, males have been ruling over the feminine principle. That's why the Apostle Paul, 2,000 years ago, said, now the mystery of iniquity doth already work. It's the mystery of imbalance, the mystery of being. Now we are here. This is the High Holy Days. And we see the scriptures and it says, and there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun. And she has the moon under her feet and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. Well, this woman is our divine mother. She is God. And when Christianity came to power 2,000 years ago, the divine mother went into hiding and she hid herself in the garments of her own creation and watched so that we could see what the world would look like if the male and the feminine principle were not in harmony and balance. Now we see what it looks like. So now she's descending to us and it says, and she being with child cried travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. I just wanna finish the thought. What is happening right here is that, right? this is where we are, right here a child is being born. And that child is being born in the hearts and in the minds and in the soul and the psyche of all the people of God here in the western ends of the earth. This child is an emerging higher state of consciousness and an entire new age. And we are all experiencing this shift, this paradigm shift in human consciousness. So how about those words written in the book? Can we break that if all the people change for good? Yes. Yes, it can. The scripture says, I have a fire to bring upon the earth. And what and if when I come, I find it already ignited. So we see that the menorah that burns in the temple of God, which is the heart of every man. What if these lights of wisdom and understanding, love and true power, the true power that a child of God exercises, that is the power over themselves. We as God's children are not allowed to exercise authority over any other living human being if we call ourselves a child of light. Only over myself can I exercise authority and not over anyone else. And if the fires of endurance and true majesty, which means if the crown of majesty, which means my relationship to the God of the universe, which crowns me as king over the empire of my own soul. Awareness. Pardon me? Awareness. Yes. If those lights are burning in the hearts of humanity, and then there is no reason for God to bring the fire of destruction to cleanse the earth, because the earth will already be being cleansed. The earth will already be experiencing transformation. But because the darkness and the resistance to the light is so intense that God had to shake us with fire last week to wake us up to the real to the realities. So, I'm originally from uh, Europe. I've been in this country a long time. The, I, I was inspired by the speech the president gave. However, there was a point where he said, you know, with the. Uh, Islam, the Muslims, they said uh, the prejudice, and that's not the America I know. However, my understanding during what well, was it, World War II, that the Japanese Americans that were in this country were put in detention camps. Yeah, the Americans and the Germans, just the, the, I, mostly I the, Japanese. the Japanese. Some now, Germans were detained uh, because they were vociferous about uh, what was going on, but not as a group. Not as a group. The Japanese so, as a group. That that. That's not a good thing. No, right? because that's the true nature of America. It is a, it is a, it is a police state. It is a fascist state. The only reason that we do not see it yet is because we have had an unparalleled time of prosperity. And as long as there is prosperity, we do not see the true spirit of the nation. But as soon as the prosperity is touched, then you will see the fascist spirit arise and that's what we're getting ready to see the economy is crumbling the country is going to war George Bush has already instituted a Department of Homeland Security the police are going to be given broad powers to suspend 
constitutional Freedom. rights, writs of habeas corpus. Big uh, brother is coming. A big brother is coming. He's always been here, but he just hasn't Surfaced. showed his face. He hasn't surfaced, but now he's getting ready to. But see, George Bush gave a very eloquent speech the other night. That's because the prophet Joel says, blow the trumpet in Zion, sound an alarm in my holy mountain, let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord cometh, it is nigh at hand. A day of darkness, a day of gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness, as the morning spread upon the mountains. A great people and a strong, there hath never ever been the like of this empire. This is the strongest empire that has ever existed in the history of humankind. And it says, and there shall never be any more like it, even to the years of many generations. And then, I just wanted to just finish this thought. And then the same prophet says, now proclaim ye this among the Gentiles, prepare war. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them beat their plowshares into swords, their pruning hooks into sickles. Well, that's what George Bush is doing. He is now, he is now answering the divine instructions that God is putting in his darkened heart, and he's preparing for war. And he's getting ready to go out and meet God in the battle, because it says here, let all the heathen be awakened, and let them come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat, for there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. Well, the Valley of Jehoshaphat is a place in the Old Testament where all the children of Israel went out to wage a battle. And King Jehoshaphat came out and he said, all you children of Israel, get out of the battlefield. Come up out of the battlefield. This is not your war. This war is God's. So those of us who belong to the mind of God, to the, uh, we are, if we call ourselves children of Israel, we must come up out of the war and stand by and watch God bring the heathen to destruction because this is God's battle, not ours. I thought George Bush was doing this to stop terrorists. Well, George Bush is a, is a deceiver. And he's, he is, you see, the scripture says, in that day they shall give an account of every word they speak. When he says we are going to... Uh, start a war to root terrorism and evil out of the Western world, he doesn't realize that that war is going to root him out of it. That war is going to backfire on the United States and burn this country up because he's really going to root out evil and he's it. He doesn't realize what he's saying. They, they have to give an account of their words. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, how about uh, I watch Nostradamus film and the ending of it it shows the Statue of Liberty it's gonna survive that I think that's what it means I'm not sure but correct me if I'm mistaken but what can you say about that well how about Nostradamus what can you say about him about his predictions well if you know something about the system we're talking about right now the Kabbalah mm -hmm. Kabbalah is an ancient system the tree of life this this system of divining the future and defining the past under, by understanding how to interpret this ancient symbol called the tree of life has been passed down for thousands of generations. Nostradamus was a student of this system. Mm -hmm. He was a Kabbalist. And when he sat, sat in his little stone tower studying this system, he began to meditate on it as all mystics do. And as he meditated on it, he began to draw out of this symbol, as a result of his own intuitions, what he perceived the future of the world would look like. Now, the Apostle Paul said that we see in part, we understand in part, we know in part, mm -hmm. but when that which is perfect comes, that which is in part will be done away with. So Nostradamus did see in part, mm -hmm. and he did understand in part, but everything that he wrote did not come to pass. Uh -huh. And everything that he said cannot be interpreted in the light of present events, because most of it, a lot of it is very obscure. And when you see and the future, you don't hold it. That future doesn't always happen. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. because. Yeah, because some people are, th are thinking that that film is uh, an American-made film because uh, it always shows that Americans are the, the ones who are going to survive. And, um, and one more question. Um, you, you mentioned about this country that is going to survive. 
is there? No, 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 no. This uh, country is not going to survive. Oh, I'm sorry, because I thought what you mentioned it. What is getting ready to be uh, born okay. out of this country is a new nation. Oh, okay. A new nation born out of the darkness of this age mm. into the light of the coming age. And that nation is going to be made up of all the children of light who are coming to perfection in America. But we must repent of our involvement with this mm. system. We must repent of the I genocide this system is, is guilty of. We must repent, re repent of, of slavery, of, of warfare, of injustices that are the history of the American empire. So how do you think uh, God is going to bless those ones who are, um, who are fighting for love and peace that is being criticized by some other people? Fighting for love and peace? Yeah. God will always protect those who fight for love. If they're fighting with weapons that don't kill human beings but kill their ignorance. So what should have what suppo we're supposed to do now is to establish peace in a peaceful way, not in a bloody way, right? You can only exactly. You see, <laughs> we are the children the scripture says that we must walk in peace and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Mohandas Gandhi said the only devils that are running around in the earth are the devils that are inhabiting our own psyches. Mm. And the only place, the only war that we are allowed to fight against others is against the devils of our own lower nature. And because they have, they're not fighting against the devils of their own lower nature, they think everything out here is devils. And that's why they're going out to fight what they perceive the devil, and they don't realize that God is fighting against them because they're the devils. So the majority of the population in this world, uh, all their minds are now poisoned by the, those evils. So how can we fight those evils? So how can uh, uh, is it just the person there? Is it just the person who can uh, who can fight those, or uh, there is uh, someone? You're saying basically we have to step aside and let them. So fight it's it us out. who can stop us. Uh, who can stop everything? It's no, us. we cannot stop the wars. All we can do is stand as a witness against it. Oh, okay. And in our in act action in inactivity, Buddha taught, be inactive. Stop. Sit still. See the see the unfolding of God's will, but. Buddha said the true state of consciousness is action in in, in in action. So we do not support the system as it goes to war. We drop out of it, but in our dropping out, we become very active in the um, in the process of coming out. But I think, but I think, like you know, um, if we just stand there, like. Like we just watch as a witness. How can we change the world? There uh, am, I, be... am, I, am I standing in a corner somewhere? No, there should no. be someone like you. Follow. Okay, do what I'm doing. Yeah. Take, go to the street corner and tell little children, do not fight, do not kill. Tell them to follow the teachings of the Buddha. Tell them to walk in the light of Christ. I do that, but they just laugh. Uh, that's okay. That's exactly what they should do. Yeah, if, I know. If they laugh at you, that means that you're walking in the true light. You know what? And, and, and I make songs, but they don't want to record my songs because it's all against love. And, uh, it's for love and peace. But that's because the scripture says, weary not in well-doing because you shall reap in due time. You, you're writing those songs? They said my it's stupid. Friend, I, 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 I wrote that song that says, uh, um, no matter what your religion is, uh, it's not all about religion. The key word is love. Well, you're going to get to sing that song in the presence of millions yeah, because of individuals we always mention the, at the, the next Woodstock. Because we always mention the word God, but the, the truth is the real word, uh, the real, the key word is love. That God, God is love. God, yeah, God, because God, God is love. Because if you say God, people think that God is, you know, there's a lot of gods in this world. Yeah. They believe in different gods. That, well, no, I mean, yeah, I know. There's only one, but no, everyone has the if, if all the people are like us, uh, we think Allah and, yeah, and, and uh, there's a different name. <laughs> That's the yeah. same one. Mm. Same. Yes. So the keyword is love. Yeah. My first question is: in, uh, in the Bible, does it say anything about the three religions of, based on the Book of Abraham coming together and fighting in direct relation to what? I, I'm here, if I'm hearing correctly, this is where Judgment Day will come from. This is necessarily the beginning of the end, and it will be God's second coming to earth where he establishes the kingdom. Is that right? the Messiah is getting ready to be revealed right. from the Jewish side of the tree of life. Right. So in, in the book, in the Holy Bible, or in, yeah, now does it say anything about the three religions 
coming together and having war against each other. Well, sure. It talks about all the sons of darkness being brought up <laughs> against each other in the day of the Lord. Okay. The scripture says that this is a day in which God shall dispel the darkness. You see, the study of the Kabbalah has to do with the two traditions that came down from Moses when he came down from the mountain. It says in the book of Exodus that Moses came down from the mountain and Moses had two tables of stone. He had two tables of stone. And, and, and it says Moses had two tables of stone and it was written on this side and on that side. Well, we have a stylized view of Moses coming down with two pieces of stone with five commandments on this side and five commandments on that side. But that's not what this ancient tradition teaches. It teaches that when Moses came down from the mountain, there were two traditions of the law that he brought down, the written tradition and the secret oral tradition. And what that means is that Moses took a stone and inscribed the Torah rigid, inflexible, and gave that to the world and handed it down along that line that led from the time of Moses to the time of Paul. Remember now, Paul was a rigid, orthodox, Pharisaic Jew who read the scriptures literally, did not give quarters as to anyone's interpretation of it but his own. And that, the, the, the keeping of the Torah has now passed down to the Jews of our time. And then Moses took the children of Israel aside. He's saying, now look, this is what is written, but if you follow it, you will die. This law is an oracle, and you must understand correctly what this means, and so now I'm going to tell you what it means. And he expounded the secret oral tradition. And so, and that oral tradition was handed down from the time of Aaron to John the Baptist to where we are in our time. So now we have come in the light of the oral tradition of the law, the secret meanings. So among those secret meanings is that Moses takes the mind of Israel and he says, now look, 2,000 years from now, this mystery, uh, 1,300 years from now, this mystery that I am preaching about in types and images is going to appear in the earth. And when it does, all of the secret meanings of this law will begin to unfold. So now he says to them, okay, now, here is the law. I am commanding you in the written law that when you go into the land that God has promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, I want you to kill everybody you see there. Right? That's what the law says. The Torah says it. I want you to kill every man you meet. I want you to kill every woman you meet. I want you to destroy every child you meet. And I want you to kill all the livestock. Well, that's what Moses' law says. Well, how can Christianity be based on such a, a treacherous law? Well, then Moses said, yeah, but here's the secret meaning. The land that is promised to each and every child of God is not real estate at all. It's the body. This is the land. You see, we're entering. That's exactly right. This is the, mis this is the promise right here. So as the soul enters into the empire of its own soul, you must go in there and destroy every enemy you meet. And who is your enemy? Yourself. You are your, your ignorance is your enemy. The, the dark nature in your own soul is your enemy. Now those Zionists who read the Bible literally and those Muslims who read the Quran literally, which is based upon the criteria of the law and the prophets, are taking the literal exposition of the law and using it as justification for killing interest. each other. Yeah. Because they see in each other the infidel, yeah. they don't see the infidel in themselves. <laughs> so Moses says, now look, every man you meet, I want you to kill. So what, then they, and then he says, but here's the meaning. The man in every one of us is that propensity, that inclination I have within my own natural self to sow the seed of error into the consciousness of another person. That is metaphorically the man that Moses wants me to destroy because that's what a man does, he sows seed. So I want you to go into, the, into your own state of consciousness and kill every inclination out of yourself to do that. 
And then he says, I want you to go into yourself and I want you to kill every woman that you meet there. And a woman metaphorically is every inclination I have within myself to open myself up to receive the seed of wrong instruction. I must destroy that out of myself because in the interaction of wrong reception and wrong sowing, I develop wrong thoughts, which are the children that are born out of the relationship from wrong associations. So Moses said, kill that. Now, if anybody reads the scriptures literally and believes that Moses wants us to kill children, then yikes, <laughs> Who, who's gonna serve that religion? Why would it so, be metaphors though? Well, because he's hiding these things from the mind of darkness. Because the mind of darkness had to come to its fruition so that we could see what evil looks like and so that we could see that all the good in the earth is coming from instructions of the divine spirit. The only reason we understand this is because God is separating the light from the darkness. So those who read the scriptures literally are being separated from those who understand it metaphorically, spiritually, <laughs> allegorically. And that's why the Apostle Paul, who was killing Christians and persecuting before he, knows. Before he knew, right, as a Jew, and all of a sudden he has a revelation and he said, oh no, now I understand the meaning of the law. So he said, when the law came, I died. So Paul then died to his old literal died, nature yeah. and he came alive to his higher state of consciousness. So and, 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 exactly. <laughs> and he became the author of Christianity. And so now what, we have come... What, what is the Kabbalah and the scriptures say about Osama? We should embrace him, we should uh, <laughs> ignore him, we should join him, is that what... Uh, no, 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 no. You see, when we, when we look at the time when the Kabbalah began to have its effect in Western history at the time that John the Baptist came, John was a Kabbalist. Paul, Kabbalist. They were all students of this ancient tradition. Now you go back 2,000 years ago and you see that when this religion rose upon the earth 2,000 years ago, it began to take its westward journey to where we are because following the course of the higher sun. Now, when taking the course of the higher sun to the western ends of the earth left a big vacuum here in the east, Six, 12 jubilees later, all of a sudden comes the prophet Muhammad. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. I just want to ask you a question. Okay, I just want to lose my train of thought. I don't, want to, I don't want to lose my train of thought. Now, Muhammad appears, and Muhammad begins to receive revelations of, from we don't know. Angel That's, Gabriel. We have yeah. no idea. If well, okay. But Muhammad begins then to bring down interpretations that will be written down by his companions, exactly. and in time will comprise the text of that <laughs> writing we call the Holy Quran. Now, the very uh, teachings of Muhammad are based upon the fact that Muhammad was carried one night on a flight beyond his state of consciousness into the seven heavens, and it says that Muhammad was caught up into the prophetic substance. He took a night flight from this mosque to the furthest mosque, and Muhammad was shown, even without his understanding, the mysteries of the world that would unfold here from east to west at the day, in the day of judgment. Okay, can I ask so, you a question? Uh, you didn't finish. I, I, I just want to finish. So that's why when we open the Quran, the very first surah, the very first chapter is seven verses. And these seven verses carry the mind of Islam out of the east to the west to where we are. So now those of us who are assembled at the foot of the mystery where the Garden of Eden is being drawn near and the tree of life is unfolding, we understand that to be a true Christian is to be a true Muslim. You cannot separate one from the other. And to be a true Muslim is to be a true Jew, is to be a true Buddhist now. Does God contradict himself? No, absolutely not. Did Jesus say no one? After me, no prophet no, after me. No, it doesn't say. Oh, no. Muhammad said no, that. No, Jesus, Jesus said that. No, no, Jesus no. said in the Bible. No, Anyone no, come after me, okay. liar. No, Jesus no. said that. Yes. Jesus it's said that. Everyone, no, every prophet. Like no, 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 listen. No, Jesus no, said no, in the Bible. Okay. Any prophet after me is a liar. No, he said no, the comforter. No, no, no. You, you the scripture says the comforter shall come. If yeah. I do not go away, the comforter Jesus, shall not come. Jesus said, when I go to heaven, 
No one come. Anyone come no. after me is liar. No, it's don't liar. believe the it's liar it's prophet. It's a Did misinterpretation he of the scripture. No, no, no. Sam, to you. Sam, now let me. All right, I'm not going to get into an argument here. No, no it's not argument. Okay. I'm just telling you. He said the that? comforter shall come. The comforter, Paraclete, Ahmad the Spirit, means the comforter. Spirit. Yeah. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. This is a comfort. Yeah. Has nothing to no, do with No, actually, you're wrong. No, I'm right. The Holy Spirit. You're wrong. No, no. No, the Pentecost. The comforter comes in the power of the Holy Spirit. The Pentecost. The comforter okay, comes in the Did you read power. Acts in the chapter 2 in Pentecost? Yeah. Paul himself that hasn't that happened that. yet. It, happened. Sir, sir. it hasn't happened. It happened when everyone when went to different area of and they preached our God. Where did he, in the Acts. Don't you believe in the Bible? In the Acts? Yes. That's what they said. Pentecost. No, no. It says, on. when the day of Pentecost shall fully come. They were all assembled yeah, in one place. To preach, to go everywhere. And what to preach about God. Twelve disciples. Sir, this, is the word, this, this is the word of the Lord that was spoken by the prophet Thank Joel. You. Thank you. That in the last days I shall pour out my spirit Very upon all flesh. Oh, the this day is the end of time. Uh, here we are. Here we are. And the Spirit is being poured out on upon all flesh because the early church was looking into our time and they saw, oh, that's when the day of Pentecost will come. When the Spirit finally pours out. Can you listen to me now? Thank you very much. All right. First of all, Jesus Christ said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. That's right. He said, No man comes to the Father. But to me, he said, there is no other name <laughs> given under heaven That's true. whereby <laughs> men must be saved. Jesus Christ said, he's the, the sin bearer. He's the Lamb of God. So I just want to ask you a question, okay? Was Jesus Christ crucified for the sins of the world? And still being or, crucified. Or, or did this man come 800 years later and say, John the Apostle was wrong? He when John wrote the book and said it's over, so this other man comes and said, "Oh, I forgot." God said, "We need one more prophet." Shit, Jesus Christ is God. Come on now, explain that to me now. The scripture says, huh? "Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before That's the great right. and coming right. day of the Lord." That's right. True. Elijah, I'm sorry. I didn't. The scripture says, "I'll send you Elijah the prophet before the great and coming day of the Lord." And he shall turn the hearts of the children to the fathers, and the hearts of the fathers to the children, lest I smite the earth with a curse. Is that true? Mm -hmm. So there's a prophet coming, right? No, there's no prophet. No, Jesus. The scripture says, oh, "I will no. send you Elijah." When he ascended to heaven, did he say, "I'll <laughs> be with you forever"? Did, did he say, "I'll be with you"? Always be with forever. You. Christ is with us. How come he be with you? He's not with you and by flesh, by Holy Spirit. That's exactly right. So this Everywhere. Church, exactly. Church, the Holy Spirit. Church, He's a comfort. Church. If you go pray, God, He sent the Holy Spirit for you so, to comfort you. He's a comfort. He's a Pentecost. Was you, did Jesus Christ raise from the grave or what? Still of being course, raised. raised. No, no, he's still being raised. He raised him. No, he wasn't. He was raised, period. It ain't no, wasn't right. being raised. Here's, here's the answer to this. Yeah, that's right. Jesus Christ, called of God a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. Melchizedek had no father, no mother. It's a spirit. It's a spirit. Uh, it's spirit. Okay. Listen what it says. Listen what it says. Of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing ye are dull of hearing. For when ye have need that you ought to be teachers, you have need that teach you again what be the first principles of the oracles of God and you are of such as have need of milk and not of strong meat for strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age who have had their consciences exercised to understand both good and evil but those who use milk are unskillful in the word of righteousness now when you look into the mystery of Christ which is a very hard mystery to understand and it happens to be sealed up with seven seals because the scripture says that this book is as a book that is sealed when it is taken to a man that is learned. And they say, please read the book. The learned man gives it back and says, I cannot for it is sealed. But can I, can I the book is sealed. The learned man simply says, I'll tell you what I understand, but it's all subject yeah, to change. Let me ask you a question. Because when that which is perfect comes, my partial understanding will dissolve. But let me ask you a question. That's what the scripture says. Why do you teach that? I mean, it's all simple. 
my little son can understand. There you go, be you his know, little my children. Son can open That's up exactly the Bible. It. When the Bible says, "For God so loved the world, yes. that He gave His only begotten, begotten Son, son. And still giving. whoever still believes giving. in Him, no, it's not saying He gave it, but he have given. everlasting life." This I mean, is why y'all want to add all this yes. stuff on, why and then y'all the ones who confuse my son. See, I tell my son, "Listen, homeboy." I tell my son because I'm from the Bronx, but I know what the Word of God says, homeboy. And I'm going to tell you right now, all this stuff, and I, I agree because you're a scholar, and I respect you, praise the Lord. But I'm going to tell you, there is no mediator between God and man except Christ. Except the Christ. Lord Jesus and Christ. know you and not that get, Christ is but, right but here. Listen, listen. This is where listen, Christ listen. dwells. That goes for Arabs, Muslims. So Christ, Christ was our sin. We are anybody, sin. What's the difference? We all are sinners, and we all need to be saved. We all need to come to Jesus Christ, exactly. you confess can be saved our by him. sins, and let John the Baptist say, "Behold, the Lamb of God, yes. who takes away the sins of the world." Okay, you God can't be died saved for us. Him, right? So all this stuff over here, I agree with you. But come on, let's keep it simple, man. Let's not put all these people through all this bullshit. Let's get it right. You can be God saved without him. God, that's Jesus it. Jesus Christ, and that's that. He's the one that gives you comfort. He, if you take communion, he's going to give you comfort. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. If you take the communion. The all this philosophy. Like you when, understand it, but not when, everybody yeah. like you. He, he <laughs> said, anyone <laughs> come by me, another world by my flesh. That's right. Well, a sacrifice, that's the right. true sacrifice for redemption. But those redemption are just from words, sin. Those are from just sin. words until you understand what they mean. Uh, mm. you know, the scripture has, in the myth of Christ, <laughs> the universal myth of Christ, Christ is on the cross, there is a thief on the right side and a thief on the left side. Yes. Now, Jesus looks to the thief on the right side and he says to him, Today this, you'll be with me. Today you'll be, now. Does he mean that day? He means this day. Because this is an <coughs> epic unfolding myth. It's not historical. These books are not records of things that happened. They are records of things that are happening. And so when he says, this day I have begotten my son, we're still being begotten because the Son of God dwells in every single individual. He's not one person that ever walked the earth. He is all of God's children. All who call upon the name of the Lord gave He power to be called the sons of God. And so this is the day that the scripture speaks of and it says, now but exalt one another, exhort one another daily while it is called today. Just as the sun rises in the east every morning, and sets in the west every evening. This is the day of the Lord. And we are now at the end of it. And it says, but exhort another one daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin, which means departing from the law of Moses, which is the meaning of the mystery of Christ. <coughs> For we are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end. For what is, when it is said, today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your sins. You see, this is the day, if we are made part, if we hold our confidence steadfast to the end. 